In this video, I'm going to demonstrate a method for farming extracts using the Kalix Quest Age for Gorgeous. This is similar to how you farm extracts using Metallia against Asagis, however this is a more endgame setup designed to farm extracts with more HP. Now this method can be used to farm non-HP stats, as this will do so at a similar rate to Asagis, however this is more intended for farming extracts with more HP, since this is usually a stat that's overlooked when farming extracts. Now, I will demonstrate this method quickly first, and then I'll go over it again more slowly while explaining the abilities, equipment, etc. Now, first to demonstrate that this is on 20 star enemy strength. Also, I won't particularly need carry for this. I have a carry active, but I'll be in revenge mode anyway, so I'll have a hub sync crit rate. Now we want Gorgeous Connex Stage. Now, as you can probably see, this is quite similar to how farming sagis works. Let's go over it more slowly. Now, using Metalia, because she has an overload that captures all enemies on the map except bosses and non standard enemies, which means we will just have to then finish off the boss itself. We have some support units, I'll explain in a minute. And some sacrificial units. Now to note, you can use um, ZL and ZR on Switch, or the equivalent for your platform, to quickly skip between allies, enemies and the base panel. Now these sacrificial units have self-sacrifice, which comes from two stars in the Shroom subclass, and this will give them this will give allies more revenge upon their death. And forced counter, which will force the target to counterattack them, which is f and this is five stars in the martial artist subclass. So these are the required ab abilities for the sacrificial units. Optionally, you can also have secret recon, five stars in ninja subclass, gives them more movement but lowers their HP to one. Well, movement is useful here, and they want to die anyway. If you want to reuse these units for other sacrificial purposes, you can optionally give them Leak Demos, which is a Wicked Leak from Margarita. Uh, if she learns the ability, she can run through Carowald and turn it into a scroll on any difficulty. But this isn't required. The important ones are Soft Sacrifice and Forced Counter. And beyond that, they can need a lot of movement. Just to speed things up further, they have Axel Gear, which has the Overclocker on it. This grants teleporting movement. Originally I went with Mothmen because they're flyers with high movement, but it doesn't actually matter who you use, and particularly with the Axel Gear, the flying movement doesn't even matter. So they both get killed in on counter to give revenge to Metallia. So she goes into revenge mode and she can overload. Additionally, Metallia has a revenge booster weapon, which gives 20% revenge on the side of the map. So Metallia is in Revenge mode. Also equipment, uh, she has high stats on most of her equipment. She has a Professional Innocent which increases critical damage. And she has a Freezer which uh, turns non-elemental attacks Water Element or Ice Element, that's the same thing in this game. And this will be used because we can power up elemental attacks a number of ways. Watermelon Smasher Increases damage dealt, but lowers accuracy, however we have a way around that. Water's board Athlete powers up water damage, and also I have a Cryo File to boost her water resistance. And then the Axel Gear, just for Overclocker, for teleporting movement. She has a Fly well ready, but this still speeds things up. Now as for the water thing, um, 
So all these support units have Kill with Water. This is a common ability from Carol World on Demon Lord or above. However, there are also capturable enemies you can solicit from uh, the kind of quest stages of Poison Dice, Totobonu Castle, Fortress or Flowerfall. Now, this lowers the water resistance of everything on the map, including your own allies. But because Metallia has 75% water resistance to begin with, and has this cryophile, he more than makes up for it and hits 99%. But the enemies, on the other hand, well, minus 99% on the dragons, most notably on the giant ones, who are otherwise the really uh, the, the, always the, the hardest enemies on this map to capture. Even something like this that starts off with 35% resistance drops to minus 25%. The highest water resistance on the map is on enemies like this that would have started at 60 and now at 0. But most enemies on this map have a negative water resistance, and this means that by making her attack water element, I'm dealing more damage to them. And on top of that, the attack weakness common ability increases damage dealt when attacking into a negative element. Uh, also, elemental force. So this isn't particularly well phrased, but this adds attack adjustment to your um, elemental attacks equal to your resistance to that element. Now attack adjustment is a semi-invisible boost to attacking stats during damage calcs. A lot of the abilities you see here that say attack actually mean attack adjustment. It's also known as attack power or attack correction. So Metallia's 99% water resistance is being turned into 99% attack adjustment. Now. Uh, for any abilities on Metallia that come from subclasses, I'm going to assume you have them all maxed already because she needs high stats for this. We are trying to capture some really high stat enemies. But for support units, I will try to explain which subclasses you need. Now, her own unique ability, Swamp Witch, isn't helping here. Assault attack, the further she moves, the more damage she deals. Where she is, she ends up at the cap of plus 200%. But it takes 20 movement for her to re clear, so all these units need around 20 or so movement to re clear. Bodying increases damage dealt to lower level enemy units and also uh, works on same level enemy units, that's about what it says. So at level 9999, it works on ties. Purgatory increases crit damage. Critical point increases crit damage to non adjacent targets. This is a common ability of Petter, so learn on Petter, run her through a world on a, on a difficulty, turn to a scroll, to the death, increases attack adjustment, but uh, lowers defense adjustment to revenge mode. We're not being attacked, so we just enjoy the attack adjustment boost. Gender Bender, common ability from Carol World, available on any difficulty. This switches the gender of the unit. So Metallia is normally female, but this makes her be counted as male for the purposes of other abilities. And we have a bunch of abilities here that support male units. Unstable power, 50% stat increase on turn 1, drops by 20% every turn after that. For one slot, this is a massive boost to stats. This is also from Carol World, Demon Lord or above. However, you can also capture enemies on the Carnage Quest stages for Poison Dice or Gorgeous, in fact, this stage, and solicit them and run them through Peril to spread it. Unconditional Love, originally from Artina, so it via Carol World. Increases attack adjustment, but we get no money. Big deal. Mental Pain, her own common ability, halves the uh, SP of prisoners that she captures, making them, making them easier to interrogate, which just speeds things up a bit. So that's Metallia covered. Um, she's one of the two units here who actually cares about stats. The other is Christo, and the reason for that is he has Superlative Ally. Despite what, despite what this says, 20% of his int is added to whatever attacking stats adjacent allies use. So his stats do matter, which is why he's also got unstable power, and also why he has some high stat equipment. Also to note, um, We've got Bugger units in the Foot Soldiers squad, which in total gives a 20% stat boost when there are 20 members in there. Metallia herself and all support units are all in there, including um, Christo. 
the other use of having everyone in a large squad, bodyguards. So this increases the attack adjustment of male units in the same squad by 5% and it stacks. With 19 units in the squad, that's a 95% boost to attack adjustment. However, because it only works on male units, we're using one slot for gender bender and Metallia, so the Metallia becomes male for this. Uh, Christo is also being used for Tactician, grants 100% accuracy to adjacent allies. All support units otherwise have the same abilities. Angel Song, unique ability of Celestial Host, boosts attack adjustment of adjacent allies. Curse Dance, unique ability of Sorcerer, increases damage, del uh, damage taken by enemies. Evil Eye, unique ability of Chimera, Lowers enemy stats. Cold Water already explained. Cosmetic Novice. Common ability of a measles, but it via Carol World. Increases stats of adjacent allies by 10%. Unstable power already explained. Bodyguards already explained. Final one, Dark Song. This is from the Asagi su subclass. Uh, unlike most common abilities, this actually requires six stars in the Asagi subclass. Normally, uh, subclasses, five stars is the last one you get common ability on, six is just for the unique. The Sagi subclass has six common abilities instead of five, so for, so you end up needing six stars for this one, which is the last. Boost stats of allies, decrease stats of enemies. This is just to ensure Metallia is at 99 million stats. And it's actually slightly overkill for this, to be honest. But yeah, everyone else has the same abilities otherwise. Uh, I'll say what on Pedo just because I like Pedo and like having a high stats, there's no particular reason. Uh, Pedo is not specifically needed for this. Um, he boosts the attack adjustment of Overlords. Unfortunately, Metallia is not an Overlord, but Pedo's a useful support unit in general because she can boost the effectiveness of Killia, Usalia, Zeta, etc. So she's a good unit to have as a support unit, so that's why I'm using her. Mail's being used because of live experiment. It's confusingly phrased, but nearby allies deal more damage, nearby enemies take more damage. And also it's been used because of Queen Glitter. Increases attack of male ally units on the map by 20%. Again, this is also partly why we have Gender Bender and Metallia. Now, Krista is the only one whose stats matter other than Metallia, otherwise everyone else just needs movement. And Overclocker is on Axel Gear is nice to have because it speeds up it speeds up everyone's movement. Anyway, I think that's the equipment and abilities covered, so we capture the map, leaves just this enemy and we terrorize. <laughs> Finally, we interrogate. You'll see they've already got low SP because of Metallia's mental pain ability. A couple of interrogations. We mass extract. And this is what we get from two rounds of this. So this is similar to what you get from Tyrande of Asagis for non-HP stats, however that is a lot more HP. The prison holds 128 prisoners, so it could actually hold 3 rounds worth, because you get 39 each time. However, for some reason when doing the mass extraction, the HP on the resulting extract caps at 2.5 million and we're already nearly there. Not sure why that caps there, but yeah, keep in mind that that's why I'm, that's why I'm doing this every 2 runs. Now, an ability I didn't use on Metallia, but considered, is Kamikaze. This is originally from Zoroken, and it's actually misworded. This doubles your crit damage if the target has lower speed than you. However, this requires a target to have strictly lower speed than you, and those giant enemies 
have such a, have such a buff to stats that even with all the stat reductions they've got, they don't drop below 99 million speed, so this wouldn't work on them, and they're the enemies that are making it hard to, ca to capture the map. If you have enough passive debuffs that you can actually get those enemies below 99 million speed, then go ahead, use this. This would actually help a lot. Now, uh, Unstable Power could be replaced by Taste of Victory if you have that and you've cleared the map enough times. However, Unstable Power is useful if you haven't already cleared the map a whole load of times. Now, one other thing to note. I do know a couple of things. Integration Squad. So, I have a high stat unit here. Whichever stat is being used for the interrogation, it uses the combined stat of all members in the squad. So even if the leader isn't that strong, having someone else strong in there helps. Now, there's no particular reason to use Adele. I just happen to have him with some really high stats. And he's got abilities to boost his stats further, just to make sure he has enough. Salvatore is used because of this ability. Uh, so, despite what it says, uh, this increases the stats of X-Rex created when she's leading the squad by, I believe, 20%. You could spread this via Carolworld and use it on someone else instead. Another thing to note, when you're using the um, X-Rex, you don't want to use them from the menu. You want to use them in battle with Lessons Caregiver. Which will, you, which will allow you to use them on five units at once in a plus shape. And optionally you can use cannon for an arm to extend how far away you can use items. Cannon for an arm is two stars made subclass. Lessons Caregiver is five star made subclass. You don't have to do honor made, but um, that's a subclass you'd need for these abilities. And using them looks something like this. Now, you'd actually want to farm a whole bunch of these and then combine them together first. I'm just showing you what it looks like. And there you go, multiple units at once. Now, to keep the sets, you need to actually clear the map. I'm just going to forfeit, the, well, I'm just going to go back to base because I don't want to waste it. Now, even if this method isn't applicable to you, I hope this either taught you something or you at least found it interesting. Whatever's the case, uh, thank you very much for watching.